everyone, welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. And today we're actually working on a Mazda, but this video applies to any make and model out there. The point of this video is to put to bed a lot of misconception, a lot of misinformation out there on how to check real quick for a blown head gasket. Now the usual check that everybody does when they go to buy a used car, um, they go to diagnose a car, they go check on a car for a buddy, is they go ahead and they pull the oil cap. Okay, they pull it and they look at it and they see this, the pudding on there, and they just they just freak out and say, oh, that engine's bad, the engine's bad, don't, that, don't buy it, don't buy it, walk away. Or the technician will say, hey, your engine's toast. The noise you have it coming from it, the issues you have having, having with it, it's due to a blown head gasket. You might as well just replace the engine. No. Uh, in a lot of situations, it's literally condensation on the cap from short driving trips or uh, cold weather like we see up here in Chicago. Today, we're going to show you a blown head gasket, crack in the block, crack in the head, or in this case, a water pump, internal water pump that has failed and dumped coolant in the oil, and how an engine that looks like it has a blown head gasket looks when it doesn't have an issue at all. There's distinctive differences here. So there's two right here that's gonna show you a difference and help you guys determine if the vehicle you're looking at actually has this concern. Let's get started. All right, let's start off with the Mazda CX-9. This one definitely has an issue with coolant entering the engine oil. Now this engine is actually made by Ford. It's a Ford 3.5 liter, 3.7 liter Duratec engine found in the Ford Explorer, uh, the Flex, the Edge, the Taurus and the Fusion Sport. It is an internal chain driven water pump that once it fails, it just dumps all the coolant right into the crankcase. So this one's a really good example of how it looks when coolant has actually entered the engine oil. The very first thing you wanna check, of course, is the coolant level in the bottle here. You can see this bottle is totally empty. Let's try to get you a look down inside of here. That's not always a good check when you're going for a used vehicle because the person selling the car could have filled it back up, said oh, everything's good to go, appears good to go. So, but that's one of the things you wanna check. And then the next thing, of course, is the fill cap. And this is, this is just starting our investigation, basically. So yes, it does have it on here. I've seen it this bad and worse. Uh, vehicles that have no issues with coolant entering the oil, no head gasket issues, nothing like that. It's just built up over time from the condensation inside the crankcase from short driving trips and cold weather. It's very, very common up here in the north. So the next thing you want to do is look down in here. See this fill spout right here, the actual oil fill spout, and it's built up on there? That, again, can be normal on a vehicle that has no issues. What you want to look at is past that. You want to look down at the valve train. I'm going to try to zoom you guys in so you can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, there you go. So you see all the pudding is down inside the head there on the valve train. And you can even see the cantaloupe on there is obviously uh, rusted. That's pretty obvious. There is way too much in there. And it's mixed with the oil. You can see it in there. And there's definitely a coolant entering the oil condition from a head gasket, cracked block, cracked head, or water pump, as you see here. All right, let's zoom you back out here. The next thing you want to do is pull your oil dipstick and look at it. This is not normal, okay? Even if you had short driving trips and condensation on the fill spout here in the cap, an engine with no issues would have clean, regular engine oil. This is not normal. By comparison, this 2009 Ford Expedition with the 5.4 three-valve Triton engine does not have a coolant consumption issue. But if you just pulled that oil fill cap like a lot of people do, you would assume so. So let's go through the same checks. Coolant level, nice and full. And if you pulled it over here, nice and full. We're not adding coolant, it's not using coolant, okay? You go to pull this cap right here though, Boom, you're gonna see it. And it can get quite thick inside of here depending on how short your driving trips are and how cold the weather is. Now there's natural condensation built up inside of the crankcase, but it usually burns off through the PCV system. It comes through and it gets burned off as the engine gets nice and hot for an extended period of time, let's say a half an hour, 45 minute drive to work, school, or whatever. If you're doing five, 10, 15 minute drives to, to school, it never has time to burn off. So all that condensation builds up in there, where does it go to the highest point? Boom, right there, it will build up because it mixes with the oil vapors that naturally come up too, okay? So we're gonna do the same check down in the oil fill spot right here. You can see it's building up inside of there, perfectly normal again. But you wanna look past it into the valve train there. You see the valve train? Nice and clean. Again, pull the oil dipstick out. Boop. 
right down here to the end and it's nice and clean. Or if you didn't change the oil in a long time, it's nice and black. Either way, it's not creamy and milky. So you can see the difference between this one, it does not have an issue, but up here though, and this one right here that, ugh, it's pretty darn apparent. That's the difference. And there you have it, two good examples, one of which clearly has an issue, the other one, not so much. Both of them had the buildup on the cap. It just goes to show that method is not accurate at all. You wanna look into it a little bit more like we did on both these engines, and then it was perfectly clear which one actually has the issue. Now I know there's a million different ways to check for an actual head gasket issue. There's pressure tests, uh, there's compression tests, there's chemical gas tests in the coolant bottle. There's all kinds of tests. This is just to debunk the old putting in the cap test that a lot of people are still stuck on doing. I actually had one guy who's a technician all his life in the southern states. He moved to Northern California, I believe, and he started seeing this. He asked me, is my engine done for? And I had to kind of school him on it. Then in Northern climates, you're gonna see this with short trips like this and colder climates. It's gonna happen, it's perfectly normal. You wanna look for the other signs before determining the engine was safe or not. Saving thousands of dollars. So it just goes to show, the more you know, the better off you are. That's all for now. I hope this helps you fix your Ford yourself. See you next time, guys.